I came across something that might make you rethink your Disney Plus subscription. Seriously, this is one of those stories that will make you reconsider everything you knew about Disney. Let me fill you in. So there's this woman, Dr. Tang Swan. Last fall, she and her husband and mother-in-law decided to go have dinner at Disney. Raglan Road Irish Pub to be exact, which is located in Disney Springs, Florida. Now, they didn't pick this spot randomly. Dr. Tang Swan had a life threatening allergy to dairy and nuts. And they chose Raglan Road because Disney and the restaurant assured them that they were super careful with food allergies. And I'm sure you know how it is. When you've got an allergy that's serious, you need to be absolutely sure that the place is safe. Dr. Tang Swan was super cautious. She even told the server about her allergies, not just once, but multiple times. And each time she was reassured that her food would be safe and no problem. When the food finally arrived, they even double checked with the server about the safety of the meal for a final time. And again, they were told everything was safe. But you probably see where this is going and things weren't fine at all. After eating around 8 p.m., everything seemed okay. But by 8.45 p.m., Dr. Tang Swan started having a severe allergic reaction. It was bad. They rushed her to the hospital, but despite their efforts, she didn't make it. She died from anaphylaxis anaphylaxis, a severe allergic reaction. The autopsy revealed she had high levels of dairy and nut allergens in her system, the very thing she was allergic to. I mean, can you imagine? You go to a place like Disney, trusting them to keep you safe, and this happens. After her death, her husband, Jeffrey Piccolo, filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Disney in February. He claimed Disney and the restaurant were negligent and that negligence led to his wife's death. It's heartbreaking and frustrating on so many levels. But here's where things get really wild. Disney's response. Instead of addressing the issue directly, Disney's lawyers filed a motion to compel arbitration. If you're not familiar, that means they wanted the case to be handled by a neutral third party outside of the court rather than going through the usual legal process. But here's the kicker. Disney's argument is based on something Piccolo did back in 2019. You see, when Piccolo signed up for a month-long free trial of Disney Plus in 2019, he had to accept Disney's subscriber agreement and terms of use. According to Disney, the agreement included a clause where he agreed to arbitrate all disputes with Disney and its affiliates. And they're also saying that buying tickets online for their 2023 trip, he agreed to those terms again. Can you believe that? Piccolo and his lawyers are calling Disney's argument ridiculous. And honestly, I would agree with them. They're arguing that it's absurd to think that agreeing to some terms you signed up for streaming service would prevent someone from taking a wrongful death case to court. It's like Disney's trying to say, hey, you clicked I agree on this random thing years ago, so now you can't sue us even if we were negligent. It's so out there that Piccolo's attorneys said it borders on the absurd. And you know what? They might have a point. Piccolo's legal team also pointed out that Disney is essentially trying to prevent all 150 million Disney Plus subscribers from ever taking them to court over something as serious as wrongful death, even if the issue has nothing to do with Disney Plus. It's like they're trying to use a tiny clause in a huge document to protect themselves from any kind of liability. There's a hearing scheduled for early October to figure out if this case will go to arbitration or if it will be heard in court. It's a big deal, not just for Piccolo and his family, but for everyone who uses Disney services. I mean, how far can some of these companies go? It's something we've got to keep an eye on. But what do you think? Can you imagine being in Piccolo's shoes, dealing with the loss of your wife and having to fight just to get your day in court? It's wild. While Disney's legal battle has been making headlines, Mr. Beast has also sparked widespread outrage. There's been this whole situation where Mr. Beast is being accused of blocking people from talking about victims, including those who alluded to they were sexually assaulted. It all kicked off with some messages that supposedly came from a Discord group. Now I have to say, it's not clear if these messages are legit or not, but they've caused a massive stir online. Eric, who's Ava Tyson's partner, is somehow involved in all of this. An anonymous account posted what they claim is an internal message 
that was originally sent to mods in a Discord group. Again, I gotta stress, we don't know if this is real, but it's adding to the growing narrative. The message allegedly said that Ava regrets who they used to be and that they're disgusted with themselves. It also claimed that they didn't know one of the people they were making jokes about was a minor. But the minor involved are saying Ava definitely knew. The whole situation keeps getting messier. Jess has claimed that she had a sexual relationship with Ava and that things turned into sexual assault. The message also claimed that Mr. Beast and his team are trying to keep everything quiet, especially because they got big deals with companies like Amazon. The pressure is intense and it seems like they don't want anything blowing up online. Rosanna Pancino, another creator, also got involved. She says she's got a hold of a 36 page employee manual Manual, allegedly written by Mr. Beast himself. According to her, this manual shows that Mr. Beast plays favorites and that there's a boys club mentality in the company. The manual apparently says that A players are the best employees, while B players are those who can become A players with training, and C players are just average and should be transitioned out of the company immediately. Many believe this sounds like a toxic work environment if this is true. Rosanna even shared parts of the manual in a video, and it's pretty shocking. There's a section that says it's okay for his friends to be childish during filming, even if it involves drawing inappropriate things on the whiteboard and doing something stupid. The manual encourages people to let them be idiots because that's what the audience likes. But it also raises questions about the culture Mr. Beast is fostering at his company. What's my take on the employee manual? Mr. Beast seems like a pretty intense guy. I don't think working for Mr. Beast would be normal under any circumstance. So it kind of makes sense that his philosophy is kind of out there. That's just my take. But speaking of high profile celebrities, let's talk about Cristiano Ronaldo. He has just launched a YouTube channel and is already smashing records. In fact, he reached 22 million subscribers in a single day. That's wild to think about. Ronaldo is on another level of fame and it seems like everything he touches turns to gold. But even with all this crazy news, there's one story that really stands out. It's a lawsuit against Elon Musk, JK Rowling, and other cyber bullies. This is all happening in France, where the boxer Iman Khalif said she was targeted online with transphobic comments. With Rowling and Musk specifically named in this complaint, this is becoming a big deal. After Khalif defeated Italian boxer Angelina Carini, the internet exploded with unfounded claims that she's trans or a man. Despite the International Olympic Committee defending her, saying she was born a female and has always identified as female, people like Rowling and Musk jumped on the misinformation bandwagon. Rowling in particular made some nasty comments about Khalif, saying she had the smirk of a male and was protected by a misogynist sporting establishment. Musk, as usual, chimed in with his two cents, agreeing that men don't belong in women's sports. The lawsuit is essentially against unknown persons, meaning it's open-ended and can pull in anyone who got involved in the cyberbullying. Even Donald Trump might be dragged into this because of the comments made on this issue. Logan Paul could also be in trouble since he called Khalif a man on X, but he ended up deleting the post and said he might be spreading some misinformation. Khalif's lawyer said that this lawsuit should serve as a lesson in defending the rights and honor of athletes worldwide. It's one of those cases that could have major implications, especially if people like Musk and Rowling are held accountable for their online behavior. And speaking of lawsuits, you've probably heard of Logan Paul's ongoing battle with CoffeeZilla. CoffeeZilla, whose real name is Steven, has been exposing Logan for his failed crypto zoo venture, calling it a scam. Logan obviously didn't like that, so he sued Stefan for defamation. But Steven isn't backing down. Steven is actually accusing Logan of filing the lawsuit just to shut him up, because Steven is starting to dig into another one of Logan's companies, Liquid Marketplace. Liquid Marketplace, for those of you who don't know, is a platform where people can buy fractions of collectibles, like Pokemon cards. But there's some shady stuff going on. And the Ontario Securities Commission in Canada has accused the company of being a multi-layered fraud. They've said that the company misused millions of dollars in investors' funds and made hidden payments to shell corporations. Logan wasn't directly named in the Canadian investigation, but Stephen has still reached out for him for answers. What was Logan's response? He hit Stephen with a lawsuit the very next day. It looks like Logan is trying to silence any negative press, but Stephen is fighting back. He's even started selling t-shirts to raise money for his legal defense because his insurance company isn't 
covering the lawsuit. This whole situation is just another chapter in Logan Paul's controversial career. Depending on where you look online, people are either backing Logan Paul or completely siding with CoffeeZilla. But it's clear that this lawsuit isn't just about defamation. It's about power and control over the stories that we get told. What are your thoughts on this case with Logan? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Consider watching this video right here and I'll see you in the next update.